Hey guys, good evening. It's been a while since my last stream. In fact, it's been about a month because I quit doing streams right before Halloween so I could record some Halloween tutorials. And then I kind of just took a break to kind of recuperate and collect myself. But I think I'm back. Um, I've got some really fun holiday inspired streams planned for you guys. And fingers crossed, I've got a stream planned for Monday afternoon that's gonna be very different from what I normally do. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week if you celebrate Thanksgiving. I hope you guys had a, sorry. I hope you guys had a um, safe and healthy and happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you guys continue to be safe and happy and healthy. So today we're gonna paint some Northern Lights in watercolors. And I have my reference image pulled up, so let me let me switch over to that view so I can show you guys what I'm working with. Fingers crossed that it works. Sometimes it's screwy and doesn't want to work. So cross your fingers for me. What? Well, yeah, cross your fingers for me. Sorry, I had a migraine all day. I'm finally feeling better, but you know how it is when you have a migraine, it kind of mushies your brain. My brain feels a little bit like mashed sweet potatoes from yesterday. So uh, I'm gonna do my best and you guys be patient with me and hopefully we'll get through. Aha, all right, my reference has shown up. So you guys can see just how gorgeous Northern Lights are. I don't think I've ever actually gotten to experience them. Um, everywhere I've lived, so Southeast Louisiana, Georgia, and Tennessee, do not get the Northern Lights, but you guys can see just how beautiful and gorgeous they are and how they light up the sky. So the materials I'm going to be using for today's tutorial are, and I have them all like laid out for like an aesthetic thumbnail, but it doesn't make it easier to tell what they are. So I'll walk you guys through them. I have a pad or a block, so it's bound on two sides. I have a block of watercolor paper. This is cotton rag watercolor paper, and I'm using cotton rag because it's going to be more absorbent, and today's tutorial is very wet into wet heavy. I have some of my favorite custom watercolor palettes. So I have my kind of grungy daily driver watercolor palette here. I have the quote unquote Naomi palette and this is based off of one of the characters in my comic which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. So this palette has a lot of really bright colors, a lot of neon colors, some pastels and then I'm also using some colors from the Van Gogh dust color set. So these are colors that have a color and then they have black added to them kind of um I think it's probably like lunar black from Daniel Smith and I actually have a video where I show you I swatch these for you guys and I also show you how to mix your own dust colors if you want to using Daniel Smith lunar black. I am also going to be using a little bit of salt. This is kosher salt in the tiniest cutest little glass bottle. Ah, oh, so cute. And some masking fluid. And this is masking fluid that I just put in a tiny container so that it doesn't spoil since masking fluid can spoil. Um, I've also got some brush soap and I'll explain more about that in a minute. I've got a pencil in case we decide to sketch in some mountains or a skyline. A handful of really nice soft brushes. So I have a mop and that's gonna be good for covering large areas. I've got some rounds, I've got a quill. I have some paper towels and I also have some more under the table, as well as a butcher's tray that I'm gonna use for my color mixing. Now you can also use just a ceramic plate or a plastic plate or even just like a large sheet of plastic. It doesn't have to be this. And I'm also going to need to go get a cup of clean water, which I'm gonna do in a minute. But first, I wanted to talk to you guys just a smidgen about 7-inch Kara Volume 2. So you guys might remember earlier this summer, we kickstarted Volume 2. We raised a little bit over $8,000 to get Volume 2 printed with an offset printer. We are working with Versa to print Volume 2, and we're actually waiting to hear back from them. They're 
they, the ball's in their court now. I've done a couple live streams here on the channel where we unboxed the first proof that we refu re received from them, and I unboxed the second proof that I received from them. I was really happy with the second proof, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they handle volume two. But if you missed the volume two Kickstarter and you'd still like to order a book copy of Seven Inch Kara volume two, you can order it from my online shop. Joseph will pop a link down in the chat for you guys. And then once this video, or video, once this live stream is finished, I will pop a link in the description as well. I'm gonna fill the Kickstarter orders first, since they ordered first, and then I'm gonna fill all the pre-orders. But don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of books to go around. So if you are new to 7-inch Kara, it is a watercolor comic. You can read it, the first seven chapters for free at 7inchkara.com and Joseph will pop a link in the description as well. And that'll give you a feel for whether or not this is the comic for you. But if you like watercolor, if you like soft, sensitive stories, and if you like tales about tiny people, I think you're really gonna like 7-inch Kara. So let me pop out the chat. Let me actually pause the video on my end because I don't need the video. Pop out the chat. Minimize the chat. Move over the chat. Budget over, boom, 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 boom. All right, so we have most of the supplies we need. I need to go get a cup of clean water and then we can get to painting. So this is a really easy tutorial. It's mostly gonna be about wet and to wet. And the most important ingredient, the most important supply you're gonna to need today is patience because we're doing a lot of really wet watercolor work on paper. If you live in a dry environment, your dry time is gonna be faster. I live in Southeast Louisiana. That grinding noise in the background is my dehumidifier. It has been going all weekend. So my dry time might be a little bit longer than yours. If you want to speed things up, you can use a hair dryer. My hair dryer is still packed up, so I'm just going to have to do it the good old fashioned patient way. The main colors you're going to want for this tutorial, since we're doing the northern lights, you are going to want a purple, you're going to want a black, those are going to be your main sky colors, and then you're going to want some bright colors. It could be your favorite colors for the light part of the northern lights. So pinks or neon greens or yellows, anything like that would be great for the northern lights. All right, so I am gonna be, I'm gonna go get a cup of clean water. One of the first things we're gonna start, we're gonna do, is we are going to apply a little bit of masking fluid in a really easy, easy method to create some stars. Now something else you might wanna get is just a, a scrap of paper. This is just printer paper, it's not fancy paper. And if you wanna kinda mask off so if you guys look at the Northern Lights reference, and I just Googled Northern Lights, I'm gonna cut, wow, no, I lost my URL. This is probably gonna goof all my images. Anyway, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. where is the pop out chat? There we go, all right. So, oh, it won't let me put it in because it is too long. Okay, all right, never mind. Anyway, so I'm not working from one specific image of the Northern Lights. I'm kind of going to use a bunch of them for inspiration and just see where this evening takes me. But if you guys look at the teeny tiny reference image that I have on the screen, you'll notice that where the lights are, where it's really bright, you can't see the stars. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully tear kind of a river shape like this. I'm gonna open my pad of watercolor paper up as well. And this is a nine by 12 pad. You can work larger, you can work smaller, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. And what's interesting about this is that it is glued. It is bound on two sides. Now. Ideally, you'd wanna work on a block where all four sides are glued down, but if you don't have that, that's fine. Um, you can also use clips 
to hold your paper steady or you can tape it down using burp, 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 burp. where is it i can't find it ah ha, ha there we go all right you can also tape it down using blue tape painter's tape to your painting surface whatever you've got we can make it work hey jill good evening so uh ba, ba, ba. another thing i'm going to use you don't actually have to use it for this because we're just going to be flicking masking fluid onto our surface is you may want to use some low tack tape like washi tape or like the blue painters tape whatever you have And I'm just gonna tape it down just a little bit so it doesn't budge since I have to go up and get a, a cup of water. And I'm tearing it just so that I can be a little bit more thrifty. And also I wanna decide where I want my big, the big and in to be and the little and in to be. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. but I am just kind of creating a little bit more mask, like insurance. So there is a difference, and there's even a difference between different types of blue painter's tape. So you get the ones that have like the foam surface, and I find, I, I don't like working with those. I find they tear my paper. I get uh, specifically 3M's blue crepe, painter's tape so it's the one that has this like crepe paper kind of finish and it's a little bit thinner than regular masking tape and I find it's a little bit less tacky than regular masking tape and then you guys see I apply it to my skin anyway and I do that because the dead skin cells from your skin will remove some of the adhesiveness from the tape so it doesn't it's less likely to tear your paper I mean I would do that with any like if I was using washi tape, I would do that with any tape I'm using, so. And the reason I like the crepe tape is it is made from paper, so it kind of absorbs some of your, like when I'm stretching watercolor, I can get it to absorb some of the water, so it'll actually adhere to the surface of my uh, paper a little bit better when I'm painting and actually prevent it from like buckling off of the paper. That's a good question. Okay, so working with a limited space here, so I'm gonna do a little swapperoo and prepare for masking. So when I am applying masking fluid to a surface, I used to work from the bottle, and then I found that like my masking fluid was going kind of funky or I was having issues with it. And I came across this tip online, and I apologize because I, I don't know who first invented this tip where you actually put your masking fluid in a smaller container and that way if your masking fluid spoils you can just toss the container you haven't wasted all of your masking fluid and you can get little containers this is a dinky dip but you can get the little like paint pot containers from like Dollar Tree right now in fact this little glass bottle which would also be good for masking fluid it came from Dollar Tree it was like six for a dollar so one of the other things I'm going to use other than masking fluid when I'm masking things off is a synthetic brush and the reason I'm using a synthetic brush is there's a couple of rules for applying masking fluid one is you don't use any brush you love with masking fluid because it might ruin it and uh, two you never let the masking fluid dry in the brush so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go wet this brush I'm going to soap it up and this soap actually prevents the masking fluid from getting up into the metal ferrule and clogging up your brush. So this is like a life insurance policy on your brush. But I'm still using a synthetic brush because it's easier to remove the masking fluid if it gets all gunked up in, and they're very cheap. So it's not like I'm ruining a $15 brush, I'm ruining a $3 brush. So I will do that, and I'll also return with a cup of clean water.
Oh yeah, if you check the the dollar bins at uh, Dollar Tree, you uh, not Dollar Tree. I am so sorry. The Dollar Tree. <laughs> The dollar bins at Michael's. Sorry, you can often find them for a really good deal. Um, and when are we painting? We're right about to start, but the first thing I wanna do is apply masking fluid. So if you're like thinking about getting a snack, maybe five minutes. Okay, so I have the brush soap worked into my brush. I have my masking fluid in a small pot. And I'm just gonna do kind of a flicking motion. If you use a larger brush, you'll get larger spatters. If you use a smaller brush, you'll get smaller spatters. Synthetic brushes are great for this because they tend to be stiffer. So you're gonna get a better splatter effect. If you were using like a squirrel brush, you would not get as nice a splatter. You can also do this if you wanna get bigger splatters. And since we're doing stars right now, you wanna get splatters of all sizes. You might even want to paint like the moon up there, you know, if you want to, if you're feeling spicy. I saved all my spice from my mashed potatoes yesterday, so I don't feel that spicy. I don't need to paint the moon. And I recommend if you are working with masking fluid, you make sure it says removable because they do make permanent masking fluid. I don't know why and uh, that will make you sad. Okay, so I need to allow my masking fluid to dry onto the surface fully, and I need to wash it out of my brush fully before it dries, and also off my finger, because I am mildly allergic to latex. So I will be right back. But at this point, if you created a little mask like this, you can remove it. We, I was just keeping the masking fluid out of the main area where I'm going to probably be painting the Northern Lights. You can always remove it with your finger or a masking fluid pickup. And this would be a masking fluid pickup. You can now get them at Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree ones look like this. They're fine, they do the job. These things last forever. In fact, I've had this masking fluid pick up since uh, I started using masking fluid, so maybe 10 years. They just get ugly, they don't stop working. I don't really understand the point of permanent masking fluid, but Windsor and Newton makes it and it looks like the, the removable and they have it in tiny letters, whether it, this one's actually covered, I got this online, but they have it in tiny letters, whether it is removable or permanent, which I don't appreciate because if you are in an art store and your husband or wife tells you you have five minutes to run in and run out, you just grab it. You don't have time to be reading the bottle. So I wish they would uh, do a better job labeling it as permanent or removable. And uh, I'm just waiting for the masking fluid to dry. Takes the time it takes. So one of the reasons I don't really like using hair dryers when I'm doing watercolor, and this is particularly true for when I'm doing uh, masking fluid stuff, is if you heat up masking fluid, it, I wanna see if that's water, yeah. It changes the working properties of it and it can make it permanently bond to the paper when it was originally supposed to be removable or it can make it bubble up. Um, it can just cause unforeseen problems. So I usually try to avoid using a hair dryer when I'm using masking fluid. So at this stage, it would be a big no-go. I would not recommend using 
the hair dryer until you're done with the masking fluid. And I mean, until your mileage may vary situation too. I'm sure there are people who have had like no problems ever with it, but I've had nothing but problems with it. So uh, I'll err on the side of caution. And again, while I wait for this to dry, I'm just going to kind of shift my work surface a bit so you can A, kind of see what's going on. And that way I can also best utilize my space. Let's see if this will work. I don't know, I'm right-handed, so I usually like having my brushes right here. So this looks and feels like it is mostly dry, so fantastic. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create an underpainting wet into wet, so I'm gonna work really wet, really loose, of all the bright colors I want in my sky. So I'm looking at my reference, and I'm noticing that this is an invitation to use me some neons. So I'm starting with neon pink, and something else you can do if you want to, might as well is you can either start it dry, or you can spray down your paper, or you can apply a wash, a layer of water all over it. So I spread it down, we're gonna get some interesting blends like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cover the whole paper with this. So this is pretty similar to a starry sky tutorial I did a while back in my watercolor basics series. I think it's, no, watercolor 101, sorry. So I've got some hot pink. I'm gonna dab in just a little bit of this more pastel pink. And I'll move the, ah, it's not what I wanted to move. I wanted to remove my reference. Move the reference and I'll dab that in. And one of the reasons I'm working on a nicer cotton rag paper for this rather than a cellulose paper is that cotton rag paper stays wet, it stays open, it stays workable longer. And you guys can see, maybe, it's already buckling up a little bit. That's because this block is only bound on two edges. So if you don't want any buckling at all, you should get a block that is bound on all the edges. All right, so some of these have some green going on. So I'm gonna dab in, I have this like minty, pastel kind of green. So I'm gonna dab that in. And then I've got a darker green over here. Grab some of this. And some of my paper has already started to absorb that water so it's not sitting on the surface. That's not the biggest deal. You're gonna get more color movement if you, if it's still on the surface. But you can work either way, whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm grabbing a magenta e color and a kind of a reddish color spread this in down at the bottom and a little at the top. Now if you ever have any colors you don't really want, you can use a paper towel. I'm actually fine with this but I'll demonstrate for you guys. You can use a paper towel and either just dip it in where it's kind of pulled or you can, while it's still wet, just kind of lift it off like that. So I'll take advantage of that and put in a darker, hotter pink. Why not? 
Now, one of the downsides of this pad is you see how wet we're working? It's starting to buckle, it's starting to kip. So what I could have done is I could have used some clips to clip it on the side, but I actually wanted this thing to go from edge to edge. So that's not gonna work today. But if you work on a block that's bound on all sides, you're not gonna have that problem. Okay, then I wanna work in some blue. And basically this project is like a three layer, four layer project. Because what you really want is you really want these colors and these blends to shine. And this is a good one for, you know, all those opaque watercolors you might have. You could use gouache at this stage. And I might be a little too color crazy. You can choose to limit what colors you use for this. This is really all up to you. Now, if you decide that's enough color, what you can do is you can either go in with black or I'm gonna go in with purple. I'm gonna clean my brush frequently. And this is where the patience is really gonna come in because we just put so much water on the paper. And if you live in a wet place, if you live in a swamp, if you live in a sauna, if you live in the ocean, it's gonna take a while to dry. You can also choose, depending on how the mood takes you and what the reference says, and how closely you wanna follow the reference because it's up to you. You may decide you wanna dab some of that purple and kinda of create the illusion of the banding. So on my paper, it is not as absorbent as some and it is definitely kipping up. I have a lot of excess water that this paper can't really handle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a thirsty brush and I'll explain that. And I'm gonna use that to absorb the extra water. Okay, so a thirsty brush, we wet our brush, we clean our brush. Now we dab it off into the paper towel. And what that does is it makes the brush more absorbent. There are blogs that explain the science behind that better than I can. But basically it's like a sponge. If you want a sponge to be more absorbent, you wet it first and then you wring it out rather than putting a dry sponge into a mess. I guess it like preps the fibers or something. And I'm trying to be careful not to overly disturb the really nice blends we have here. Now, something, ooh, I don't wanna drip purple into my thing. Something else fun you can choose to do is you can choose to use our salt while it's still wet, you don't wanna drip it into puddles because it basically won't work, but you want the surface to still be wet. And a salt shaker works better for this. You can drip salt crystals in. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create kind of like a, a snowflake effect. So this is really nice for like giving the impression of like a snowy night. And I'm trying to avoid the really wet areas because it's not gonna do much good. And now the patience comes into play because we have to wait 
for this to dry fully. But that gives me a chance to get caught up with you guys. And it also gives you a chance to clean out your water cup. If you're working on a smaller mixing surface, it gives you a chance to go clean that if you want to. We can just flip that over, move that up. So Greg said, I have a friend who gets nice watercolor paper that's bound on all four edges, but still removes individual sheets, pre-shrinks them, stretches, and tapes them. I have never actually pre-shrunk my watercolor paper. That's a new one to me. Uh, I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, I will also buy watercolor paper on blocks and then remove it, uh, particularly with like the Fluid 100, which is this paper here where you can see it's going to buckle anyway. And with the Stonehenge Aqua, similar situation. I'll remove those and then I run them through my printer so I can print blue lines. Do I have any examples? This is close enough. Okay. If you look really closely, you might be able to see the faint blue lines underneath the graphite. So I'll print the blue lines and then either pencil and ink on top of that. In fact, that's how I do my watercolor comic pages. And I can't just run the whole block through my printer. So blocks have their pros and cons. They tend to be more expensive than the same paper in a tape bound where it's only bound at the top format. But blocks, if you just go ahead and paint like this, you don't have to stretch it ahead of time because it's pre-stretched. And theoretically, it will hold it taut on all four sides. But as you guys can see, not so much. So, um, that's one of the beautiful things about this medium is it can be really flexible and you can kind of do with it and make it work with you the way you like to paint. Oh, Ahima, I'm going to I'm going to post this stream. It's going to be available after too. You can you can go eat, eat your food, eat your food, chew. That's right. Always be clean in your brush and uh, always be working with water control. That's one of the reasons I'm not that into synthetic brushes. I'm using synthetic brushes for the most part tonight because you can get synthetic brushes cheaper. The larger ones, you can get them cheaper than you could their uh, physical media, their natural hair counterparts, sorry. Um, but I find that water control with synthetic brushes is basically nil. They just drip drop all over the place. The exception for the most part is the silver black velvet brushes. These are synthetic mixed with squirrel. And they are some of the best synthetic mixes I've ever used. Ah, yes, Greg explained why the thirsty brush works. Thank you so much. Water wants to att attach to water, so it's easier to get capillary flow going. Yes, thank you. Thank you for, for that. Because my brain was just like, no, not tonight, Becca. And Calvin says, be careful or you'll get mud. Yeah, that is definitely an important point with this. This is one of the reasons I'm working larger with this tonight because for an illustration of the Northern Lights, you could work, let me see. You could work smaller. You could work like four by six or like five by seven. And I thought about doing it on this one and then I was like, no, because I want to do all the colors. So what's really important though is this is not going to work super well on a cellulose paper and it's not gonna work very well on a hot press paper because the hot press, the, the fibers are too condensed. You're gonna get a lot of lifting. Hot press is not really designed for like this much water really. And for a cellulose paper, the pigments are just gonna sit on the paper surface. And then when we do our second layer, it's gonna all just wash off. Uh, Calvin, you know, I actually have had a different experience with cotton rag blocks than that. Calvin says, Block will still bend. It's pretty much the nature of cotton. They expand when wet. How saturated are you saturating your block? 
So um, on pads like this where they're on two ends, yeah, I do get the bending. And this is actually significant. Like this is like an inch of expansion. Whereas with that bow hung block I just showed you, this one here, I would get, I, I mean, I just finished up the field test on this last night. I would get a little bitty bit of rippling, like the tiniest bit, like not even enough that I was concerned about pooling as I would be with this. Um, and it dried flat immediately. So on smaller blocks where you have less surface area, so less room for buckling, you're gonna have less problems with buckling. It also does a jo better job of holding the paper taut. And then it also kind of depends on what kind of glue or binding they use on the edges. Oh, give me a sec. I'm sorry. Making the, the old lady noises. I'm looking for my Cezanne block, which maybe I can't find it. Oh, gotta dig, gotta dig. Now, let's go with Saunders. Okay, so this block here, I gotta be gentle with it. All right, so it has this black binding on the sides. So the Saunders pad has so much internal sizing that when I painted on this, and I have a field test here on the channel for this paper, um, I had no buckling issues at all. Like it stayed flat. It was a little bit like painting on cardboard, but it stayed flat. So depending on how much internal sizing your paper has, it's also gonna determine how much buckling. And it also, um, you know, years ago, another artist told me that if you, <laughs> this is funny to me, if you stretch your watercolor paper, you're removing all of the internal sizing, which is not true. Most papers have a lot of sizing. Now, if you were to soak it in hot water, you would remove the sizing because most sizing is gelatin based. So um, different papers have different amount of sizing. Some of them have it as part of the internal structure. Some of them have it on the outside, like a bit of a glaze, like the original Windsor & Newton watercolor paper that people did, they didn't, I liked it, but people didn't like it because it had like a soapy texture and it handled paint strangely. It's because it had a lot of external sizing. Hema says, I like to have a distraction anyway. Oh, I get that, yeah. Yeah, because you can just ow, 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 ow. I don't think I've ever worked with squirrel hair brushes, says Morgan. Uh, stable and synthetic, that's it for me. I, okay, uh, I get that. Um, sable is, I like sable the best. Uh, sable is great. It has the snap you're gonna get from synthetics, but it has the water control that you would you would ideally be looking for. Uh, squirrel, it really depends on the quality of the squirrel. I'm waiting for this to dry, by the way, sorry. Uh, it depends on the quality of the squirrel. So like, this one looks really ratty. Um, this is a Creative Mark squirrel. This thing is a lot like painting with a wet noodle. <laughs> Whereas Blick makes, maybe they don't make it anymore, but Blick, has a squirrel brush. This one is really old. It's eight or nine years old. Um, and this one is much better quality squirrel. But if you don't like squirrel, you don't like squirrel. That's fine. I have a friend who like just hates painting with squirrel brush, will not do it. How do they get hair from squirrels? Oh, Oh, here comes the sad conversation about watercolor. So to my knowledge, unless this is changed, and like we can hope it's changed, they have to kill the animals in order to harvest the hair. Um, like with Kalinsky Sable, they, they only really want the hair at the very tippy end of the tail. So like to me, you would think, I would think maybe you could just cut it to get that and the, the, the mink, the sable can live again but um, that doesn't seem to be the current process. So there are people who have a lot of ethical misgivings about using natural hair brushes for that reason. I think with like goat and pony hair, they don't, they don't obviously they don't have to kill the animal for that. Um, it's just with the smaller animals that they have to do that. So there's a lot of people who will paint exclusively with synthetics and that drives the synthetic industry to improve, to be more in terms of handling like natural hair brushes. Now the problem with synthetic, in my opinion, is you're using petrochemicals. So to me, the most ethical way is to just do the best you can to maintain the brushes you have, to condition them, to don't leave them in your cup of water, don't 
leave the paint in them, clean them, and take good care of them so they last a really long time so you're not constantly replacing brushes. To me, that is the best solution I can personally think of at the time. Midlife crisis will likely be buying a massive three hundred dollar plus sample brush. I like how you think. It sounds like a good midlife crisis. Calvin says, "I paint with a giant squirrel mop brush, so a lot of water." I, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see that, and that's probably a lot of water every pass as well. And Greg loves painting on cardboard, like chipboard or like corrugated cardboard. Wish I would get Saunders watercolor paper here. The only place I've seen Saunders in the US, to be fair, I live in somewhat rural Louisiana. So this is not a statement about the whole US, but even when I lived in Tennessee, the only place I ever found Saunders in person not online was um, a small local art supply store here in Louisiana. So it's not super common either, which is a shame. Rhymus says killing animals versus burning up petrochemicals catch 22. Honestly, that's how I feel about it. Like I'm not in favor of culling animals for, um, for their fur, but I also eat meat. I'm, I'm sorry if that's triggering for anybody. Uh, but we also try to be ethical in the, the meat we consume for the most part, Joseph and I. And we, we're not big like red meat eaters either. Um, it's a lot, of, a lot of chicken and a lot of fish. So, um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm here to talk about watercolor. Oh, cereal board, yeah. Oh man, I bet cereal boxes would be fun with Poscas because they've got kind of that smooth finish on the back and that and they're sturdy. So it seems like Poscas would not chew them up. Joseph, you're the worst. And Kelly says, I only have two paint brushes. Well, gotta make them do double duty. You gotta make them work for you then. Hema says, I haven't done much watercolor seriously, so I just make do with the big cheap packs of artist loft brushes. Um, if you ever decide you really want to get into watercolor, you, I have a lot of brushes. I'm a, mm -hmm, a lot of synthetic and a lot of natural hair and a lot of Sumi brushes, but you really don't need that many brushes. You, uh, a good watercolor mop, uh, I've had this. A lot of the supplies I have, I, I've had them since I started painting or I only bought them one time. Um, and I have three mops, but that's only because I teach classes and I need enough for my students to be able to use them sometimes. Um, you need a good mop. So when this thing is dry, it's like a big old fluffy, it's like a makeup brush, but a watercolor brush. You need, I would say a synthetic cause it's cheaper size 10 round. So like this, take better care of your brush, please than I do. So a large round like that, maybe a size six round. This is an eight. That is also an eight. So a size six would be smaller and then a detail brush. And frankly, for details, I either recommend sable or um, synthetic because they have enough snap. They have enough structure that they don't just go all floppy when you're trying to ink or paint eyelashes. And I'm, I'm still waiting on this to dry. I apologize. See, this is why when people are like, I'd love it if you did like an, a start to finish watercolor stream. And I'm like, okay, so we're, we're painting and hanging out all day. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of downtime. Morgan says, yeah, to be honest, the most ethical path with brushes is to maintain what you got. Yep. My guess is brushes get their fibers as a byproduct of the fur industry. I hope, this is gonna sound awful. I hope so, because at least then they would not be killing animals for such a small portion of their fur. I know that sounds terrible. The meat can feed the poor starving artist. I mean, I, I would eat squirrel. Kelly says, and you know that people have excuses not to do their comic. 
Hmm. I, fe I feel like I missed a beat there. I mean, yes, to be real, people, even I have excuses not to work on my comic. I've been taking a break from Kara while we do Kickstarter stuff, and I'd like to work on some, um, some pitch comics that I can pitch to publishers because uh, while self-publishing is fun, it is very difficult. And if I can offload some of that to someone else, I would love to do that. Oh, let's see. Think of it this way. Animals, renewable resource petroleum isn't. So killing animals is better for the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woof. Woo, I feel like I'm going to get eaten alive in the comments today. But, but yeah. Um, so... In undergrad, I was an environmental science minor. I spent a lot, which is like um, wildlife and fisheries. So, and my focus was invasive animals. So um, I would wear a Nutria coat if anyone was willing to make it because they are highly invasive. They've chased out all the native beavers. They dig holes in the levee and they, their existence kills a lot of native animals. And utilizing an animal that is an invasive is a good way to bring down its population while not just killing it to waste it. Yeah, the problem with watercolor painting, most of them is waiting for them to dry. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I would love, like I love watercolor and I would love to do more watercolor streams, but it is so much waiting for them to dry. Rodent meat's pretty palatable. Squirrel is quite tasty. You know, I've never had squirrel. I would, I would eat it, like I said. My dad grew up in even more rural Louisiana, and his family had a farm, and they grew up poor, although apparently his stepfather was hoarding all the money. So my dad would go out hunting to try and bring in extra meat to feed his mom and siblings when his dad was working offshore, and he ate a lot of squirrel. And uh, if you prepare it properly, it can be pretty palatable. People have eaten more weird things than I have. I'm jealous. Ah, part of the club. Nutrias are a plague. Nutrias and hogs. Yup, I would eat. I mean, I have heard Nutria does not taste that good, which is why, like, um, Sometimes here in Louisiana, wildlife and fisheries will do bounties and they'll give the meat. So you, you shoot these animals, you bring them in, and then they will give the meat away to like soup kitchens and stuff. And I've heard, but I don't know how true this is, that Nutria is one of the ones that they do a bounty on, but they don't do anything with the meat because it's just not palatable. I had crocodile once. Cro really crocodile? I've eaten alligator. We got alligator in the fridge right now. Squirrels are the destructive invaders. Well, the American greys are. They're, they're destructive here too, although I can't say they're invaders. Hema, I'm there with you. Goat meat is delicious too. Hey, welcome. I have, we are waiting on paint to dry, literally watching paint dry. Um, maybe I will, I could turn on the fan. That'll help with air circulation. I've been thinking about, we have a, a, a house size dehumidifier. I don't mean like it's literally as big as a house, but it's meant to dehumidify an entire house kind of in our bathroom. Not kind of, it is literally in our bathroom. Uh, but I was kind of thinking about getting a room size dehumidifier to uh, kind of help with this. This chat is a bit different than I expected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how we ended up on t eat all the animals. Honestly, though, one of my dreams, I don't know how feasible this is because it is a lot of work, but I would really love to like go and live on a small farm with Joseph and we just try to grow and raise everything we eat and I would just like Beatrix Potter I want to be Beatrix Potter and I will paint sweet little books about all of the delicious animals uh yeah I would love to do that though actually um we are currently looking to buy a home 
and that like having a garden is one of the considerations because I'm a I'm a brown thumb. I kill mint. I kill every plant ever. But I'm gonna try. I'll keep trying. They are, yeah. I also really love how we get. Oh man, I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, and I don't want to disturb it too much. Um, I need like a, a secondary, like a hand cam, but we're getting some really nice granulation and mixing over here with like the opaque blue mixed in with that hot pink. And I think that is a Kusakabe hot pink. And it does some really neat granulation stuff. On that note, this is, this is the kind of thing where um, like water blowback over here, you can see where it's kind of spidered out. If utilized well, you can get some really gorgeous results. So it's just a fun one. Um, I usually do these really like tight rendered watercolor comics. So getting to play around with wet and to wet and kind of loosen up is a lot of fun for me. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna turn on the fan, hopefully get some air circulation going. Um, maybe try to move the dehumidifier so we, it can maybe suck some more moisture out of the air. And I'm gonna go get a cup of clean water because that is, that's dirty and we need clean water. Okay, so I've got not only this fan going at full blast, but I turned on fans in several of the rooms that have their doors open, so hopefully the air circulation will help. It's getting there though. It's just so slow. All those crunchings. So unfortunately for me, my webcam, my current webcam is not super great at capturing color. So I'm gonna take some photos and hopefully later on you guys can see just how bright this is like uh, the webcam is really desaturating but Joseph was telling me I have apparently I have a new webcam coming in so hopefully it's better yay oh 
how do I do it? Hmm, the big dehumidifier. But I am also, like I said, thinking about getting an in-room dehumidifier. And I guess Na Nashville wasn't actually that much better. And Georgia wasn't better. And Louisiana wasn't better. So, so it's not great, but it's not so bad. Right? Like, that's why I would never... So Morgan said all those oil artists whose pieces, like, never dry. See, that's why I would never do oils is because... I just do not have that much patience. I am, I am a woman of limited patience. Uh, something else I've done when not on camera is I'll put it like directly under a vent. I used to do that in uh, Nashville. Just any, anything to get that air moving. But see, not having water is a different problem because like in Nashville, it would get really dry in the winter. And even on cotton rag, my, my paints would dry like that. So like a wet into wet technique was just like, ha ha, you wish. I don't know that quick drying oils would uh, work in Louisiana. I feel like it would still be like this where we're just, sitting and chatting and watching paint dry. Truly the art hangouts I missed. Hmm. So what I do when, I mean, I haven't done it here because I haven't needed to, but what I do when it used to be so dry in Nashville that it would dry immediately is I would just boil water while I was painting like and just leave the top off so that it kind of adds humidity back into the room. I can see that. Yeah, that explains why I was I'm over here like it's so humid here. I don't even need the extra humidity. I mean, I don't even need to add extra water. There's so much humidity in the air. So Hema says, we still have my ugly old kid paintings and my dad refuses to get rid of them. They are trash. My sad tiger, you need to do an art redraw with that then. And Morgan says, yeah, back when I did watercolor, making one mistake was a dramatic ordeal for me. The moment it dries, give up, lay down, accept the end. I'm glad I started at six. This is such a simple technique, yet it takes three hours because it's so wet. So much water. That's okay. We can, while I wait for this to dry, we can kind of talk about what's coming up next. So um, once this has dried, I'm going to remove the salt from it. You don't want to leave the salt on it. And then I'm going to probably go over some areas of it. So one thing you can do and it's really ideal if you can if you can get it really dry because while it's still wet you're more likely to get paint reactivation but you have a few options you can go back over your northern lights and accent it with some of the colors and let that dry and then move on to our next step or you can do what I'm gonna do and in my next step I'm going to use some of these Van Gogh dusk colors, mostly because I want to use some of the Van Gogh dusk colors. And I haven't, I, I feel, no, I unboxed and swatched them. I talked about them. And then I was like, oh, I don't know what to do with them. Other than monochrome paintings. I've been doing a lot of that. So um, I'm probably going to do a layer with probably the purple, frankly. And then I will probably go in with... And I'm sorry, it is so filthy. <laughs> I am. I, I do not have aesthetic palettes. I, I have gross, gross palettes. Probably go in with either black, Payne's gray, or a neutral tint for like the really dark parts of the sky. Calvin said those bad drawings would be worth millions once you made a name in the art world. Vina says, tiny palette, it is, it's an Altoids tin palette. Well, there's only, there's only four dust colors. To my knowledge, they may have actually put out more. I don't know. But uh, this works out well for just kind of keeping them self-contained.
and Hema says in elementary school parents could get our art projects made into magnets and mugs and stuff. I have my Corolla Marcus Elf portrait and watercolor pig from first grade as rectangular fridge magnets. You know, thinking about that, your poor teacher had to scan all that and submit it to like whatever service they were using to print those. <laughs> the gross palettes are an expression of your ever. They're also an expression of my cat who is about to become my victim. Give me a second. Hey, Bowie. Come on. I don't know if you can see this, but he has his own chair. No, you can't really see it. He has his own chair. Let me like lean and see if it'll do it. No. He has his own chair in the studio. So this tiny little space has three chairs. One of them for this boy. All right. Thank you, Bowie. You may go back to sleep now. Let me he is so used to these chairs that I can wheel him back and he's just like, okay. That works. All right. Thank you, Bo. Oh, Kelly says, I am in elementary school and in fourth grade. Oh, man. Fourth grade was a good year. Focusing on my art instead of the palette being clean. Uh, that or I cannot control my cat hair. Oh, there's still one wet spot. Ah, sorry. That's the thing about having migraines is that um, I over caffeinate to get rid of the migraine, which worked. I actually feel all right. And then I'm super hyper because I've like reserved all my energy for the day, which works well for streams, but doesn't work if I'm not streaming and I'm just talking to Joseph. It's just like, I really should be wearing my glasses. Wish my palettes were that messy. Oh, just get a cat. You know, it'll get cat hair embedded all over it. That'll happen. I use sh shapes in my art class. Shapes or Sharpies, sorry, in my art class for drawings. Your palette is clean <laughs> compared to mine. That's only because I don't like painting on this surface here. I prefer to use like the, you know, because I switch when I'm painting too much. But he needs a task chair for all the tasks he accomplishes throughout the day. He is a busy boy. I use a fan to draw to dry my drawings. Yeah, we got the, oh wait, do you mean like a folded fan? That might actually work. Maybe I should do that. You might be a genius. My best year was probably eighth and 10th grade. Hmm, it was, I think my best year was whatever year was the last year at that school. So sixth grade, eighth grade, and senior year were my best K through 12 years. I'm so sorry that we are literally watching paint dry. Bonus feature of cats. They mess up your watercolor palette. It's not, okay, it's not his fault. He doesn't like lay on my palette. I also wouldn't let him. It's more like his hair is just everywhere. So I try to sweep at least once a week and I always sweep up like a cat sized lump of cat hair. He's a short haired cat. I don't know how he sheds this much. Maybe I will, I mean, I've got the like ceiling fan going, but maybe I will fan it. Another thing I've thought about regarding watercolor streams is like, basically staging them so like 10 a.m we start 12 o'clock we do some other step and that'll give it like plenty of time to dry and it also means people aren't just like waiting around for me to finish i like what i'm getting over there though well it is at least dry enough for me to remove the salt i guess there is never a way to remove all the salt. I'm a pretty salty person. You know, years ago, Joseph convinced me to start doing streams while I was in grad school, and uh, I cared very much 
about my family being invested in my art at the time, which if I can give anyone a recommendation, it is the sooner you are okay with your family, brothers, sisters, grandparents, immediate parents, whatever, uh, not caring about your art, the happier you're going to be. Because you can't make them care. They either care or they don't or they start to care, but you can't make them care. Anyway, I like begged my mom to watch my streams because I was still trying to like legitimize becoming a comic artist to her. It's, it, she's cool. She's very cool with it now. She actually really likes what I do. But at that time, she was having kind of a hard time with it. So I was trying to get her to watch my streams. And uh, they were boring. I'll give her that because they were uh, just mostly SCAD assignments. So it was a lot of like blue line drawing just for hours on end. And um, she said it was like watching paint dry. <laughs> and that scared me out of streaming for a long time. Because I was like, she's right. That is kind of boring. On that note, on Monday, I am doing... So I wanted to try doing something. So I'm, A, I am trying to remove the salt. So normally, I could just brush the salt off using like a drafting brush. But sometimes the salt really sticks to the paper. So I'm just very gently using the side of my finger, not even the pad of my finger, to just dislodge the salt. And then I'm going to sweep it all off. But... Hopefully you guys can see all these like beautiful snowflake effects. That's why I like using kosher salt for this. Now I've tried using Himalayan rock salt. I had it somewhere and I think I moved it over to the kitchen again because it doesn't work. Oh wait, there it is. It doesn't work nearly as well as maybe if I ground it. But I mean, these are like the big old chunky chunks, right? Um, they're beautiful, but <laughs> they're the big old chunky chunks. They don't make the beautiful snowflakes the way kosher salt does and it has to do with the surface area so the kosher salt is like little flakes of salt whereas rock salt is like chunks of salt and the flakes of salt have more surface area so you get these like really nice delicate snowflakes whereas the rock salt you just you don't not it's not as nice as this like you still get the snowflakes but they're not the nice snowflakes even if you put the big chunks of salt down My parents are like, they're proud of me for doing it, but they don't really understand the content. They're like confused, but supportive. Yeah, yeah, that's about, that's about the sum of it. Uh, it actually took me deciding I was gonna do all ages and kids comics for my mom to get on board. Now the thing is, she, I used to write, you guys probably know that, like I wanted to be a writer growing up. Uh, my big focus was on writing and I did a lot of poetry. So my mom always kind of figured I was gonna be like a Dr. Seuss kind of person. So her disappointment, disappointment with me going into comics was just that she thought I wasn't going to be writing anymore. Okay, I got a lot of the salt. So I'm going to head over to the trash can because I don't want this all over my feet. And go scrape it off. Anyway, ADHD cycling back. So on Monday, health permitting... I am doing kind of a, I'm trying something new. I'm doing um, a kind of a pop-up stream. And I've mentioned this on the community tab before where uh, I went to Five Below. Actually, I can grab that for you guys. After I brush off all the salt. You gotta get be careful to get the salt and not the masking fluid. That's the tricksy part. Okay, so on Monday, this Monday, I'm aiming for 4 p.m. We'll see. My mom is never on time, so might be later. Um, I'm going to start doing these, like, more low-key, just, like, hangout streams. Not necessarily so art-focused. Just meant to be kind of, like, um, 
I know people are getting, having kind of a hard time with uh, not seeing their friends and not being able to hang out, stuff like that. So this is more of like a hangouty kind of stream. And uh, by special guest, the special guest is either gonna be Joseph or my mom. And uh, my mom is part of our like social pod. Uh, I'll explain that if you guys don't understand what I mean by that, but give me a second. So she's gonna come hang over on Monday and we're gonna do a kit together. And I went to Five Below and I picked up some promising kits. So not only is this to kind of, you know, check out the Five Below kits and see if they're any good, but it's also to just kind of like relax and do something different and not like have to come up with the idea, if you guys know what I mean. So it's like a hangout thing. So we have a gingerbread village that we might do. Let me move the chat so I can make sure it's gingerbread. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you, VCam. Uh, gingerbread village we have a anchor art watercolor kit with dye base full pour kit I think this is the most promising of the kits it's either gonna be terrible or wonderful but she and I are both gonna be at even odds for how well that's gonna go and then finally I don't expect my mom to do this with me but I, I couldn't resist I'm a glutton for punishment I got a manga kit let's see if a comic artist can make a manga kit so on Monday, we're probably going to do, um, I want to save the gingerbread village until we're closer to Christmas, but either the watercolor ink kit or the marble pour kit. And if we have fun doing these kits, then I might try to do the Monday hangout stream as like a regular thing. So we'll see. I'm playing around with it. We'll see. I'm gonna go put those up and then we can move on with our watercolor. time will the stream be on Monday I am aiming for four we will see if that happens manga manga kit should be easy oh we'll see about that if you can't make it to the stream Kelly that's fine I'm gonna have it up as a um, like you can watch it later if you want 4 p.m. CST, so central time, so 5 EST, I think. Okay, so time to move on. Finally, it is finally dry enough. Hooray, huzzah. I did my best to remove all, the, all of the salt, although in my soul there is so much salt, we will probably never remove all of the salt. So time for layer number two. And I'm gonna pre-activate them, so I'm just gonna day up some. Actually, you know what? I'll try the green too. We'll try as many as feasible. So I have dabbed some water. I've activated the green, the pink, and the purple dusk colors. I will also, and this is gonna be unfortunately kind of off camera for you, activate black, Payne's gray, and a little bit of neutral tint. But if you just have black, you can just use black. You can use purple. You can mix black and blue to make a dark blue, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a few. Well, I kind of should have done more water blooms because over here they're pretty. But these are mostly salt blooms, which are on purpose. I put the salt down to... Uh, kind of capture that and we will still be utilizing our salt so something you can do if you want I'm not going to do it is you can do the masking uh, speckle effect with this as well to get some like bright colored stars in the background I am not going to do that what I am going to do is I'm going to take my water clean water clean brush and I'm going to 
apply it and my goal so i'm leaving the center stripe unpainted but my goal in doing this is so that i can get some diffused blends when we blend in our dust colors so i'm going to start with our green and i'm just mixing it over on the on the butcher's tray just to make sure I actually get it kind of integrated into the brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm using, and you don't have to do this. And if you don't have the dust colors, you still don't have to do this. Um, I'm going to try and do the, Oh boy, they muddy that water fast dust colors that match the areas I'm painting. If that makes some sense, just to kind of play around with it and do something a little bit unusual they don't at, to my knowledge they don't make a blue dusk color because that would be really pretty you could probably use the uh boku undo sumiask colors if you got them those are more opaque so i applied that water first so that i could get a soft transition between our northern lights and our background color. a thirsty brush dabbing up some of the extra color if you want to if you feel like you put too much paint down you can use a paper towel and lift some of that up yeah the initial background was watercolor so it was a lot of um, bright colors and neon-esque colors and even some colors with a lot of opacity so you can lift some areas if you want they're not going to be as clean, but they will be lighter. And I wish I had another cup of water with me right this minute. You can also soften that transition if you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out the cup of water so I can do some of the dust colors in the center of our Northern Lights. Doesn't it re wet? It depends on a lot of factors, actually. It depends on the paints you're using. It depends on the paper you're using. It depends on the humidity outside. Um, give me a sec. I am painting on a cotton rag. Cotton rag is less likely to re wet and turn muddy. I mean, that doesn't mean it never does, but it just means that it's less likely to happen. Uh, in general, I'm also painting with uh, professional watercolors, so those are less like once they've dried, which is why it was really important for me to wait till these dried. Um, they're less likely to re-wet. So one of the neat things, or in my opinion, the neat thing about the dust colors is you get color plus you get granulation. So we're getting kind of like this lunar black, this sort of black granulation and just going in with the purple. So unfortunately, this is a technique that if you wanted to do this painting with, uh, let's say less expensive watercolor, student grade or children's grade or hobby grade, you would have to basically really adjust 
the order of operations for how you applied your color. All right, now I'm going in with the green. I'm gonna create a thirsty brush again because I have slathered a lot of water and a lot of paint on here and I wanna kind of absorb some of the excess. Yeah, I we whew, we waited a while to let it dry. So something else we can do while this is kind of see now I have the fan on. I'm getting like wet patches and dry patches. Something we can do is we can sprinkle a little salt again. So we're going to get that that blossoming effect. But what it's going to do is it's going to blossom back to the colors we'd initially put down. I do not want salt in that. So now you have an option of, you can let this fully dry and we can do our last layer once that's fully dry, or you can start applying that last layer into it. Extend that a little bit. Okay. We painting Aurora, the more neon, the better. Yup. For some reason, the word opacity always reminds me of seals. I don't know. Oop, 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 oop. Uh, Vinus asks, yeah, but doesn't it re-wet? Okay, so that is the thing I really wanna talk about. So I am painting on a cotton rag paper and cotton rag, your pigments are more likely to kind of seep into the fibers and actually stay there. So they're less likely to re-wet and reactivate. If you're painting on a cellulose or a wood, wood pulp paper, then everything just kind of sits on the surface for the most part and um, that's going to be very likely to rewet. So that's why I'm doing it on a more expensive paper rather than on a less, a cheaper paper. Um, when you're using professional grade pigments, for the most part, they contain fewer optical brighteners and they contain fewer extenders. Those are things that are added to pigments to make them cheaper as paints. Um, they also make the paint more likely to become muddy, more likely to reactivate uh, if you try to do layers on top of them. So that's one of the reasons I, I really push for as soon as you can afford professional grade paints, if you know you're gonna be painting watercolor for a long time and you work with a lot of layers like I do, um, to go for professional grade paints. And that's one of the qualities like when I'm reviewing us to see if I apply three layers, just real sloppy one on top of the other, do the colors reactivate, do the colors turn to mud. Um, I also tried my best to allow the paints to dry as much as possible before I did that layer on top of them. Um, it wasn't as so ideally if I was not doing this as a stream, I would do that layer and then go to bed for the night or put it away and work on something else and come back to it the next morning to allow the paints to 100% dry out in the paper and then do my next layer. But because streams are time sensitive and I can only talk for so long, uh, as soon as it was mostly dry, I went ahead and I removed the salt and I did the next layer. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Cheapo cost, uh, that's, there's my problem, cheapo cost cutting materials, I think. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I love, I love me some good cheap watercolors. I love me some good cheap art supplies. Like, I won't pretend, and I try to talk about them on the channel, because like, not everybody has buku money, has a lot of money to just throw at a project or throw at a hobby. Uh, the Fluid 100 in the US, I cannot speak to other countries. Some countries have better access and cheaper access to good art supplies than we do in the US. Um, but Fluid 100 is a fairly cheap cotton rag paper in the US, uh, cheaply available, I should say. And that's why it's not bound on two sides, cheap. <laughs> um, and uh, professional grade watercolors tend to be expensive here. And then there are companies that will sell their student grade watercolors as professional watercolors in the US. So you have to be careful when you're shopping. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Joseph says, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, or if me, Becca, wasn't doing a tutorial, I would suggest trying some of Kino's custom paints. Yeah, okay, that is, I'm not gonna do it on this one because they don't show up nicely on camera, but that is a really good point. Um, this can be a really good tutorial. Oh man, Joseph, now you're making me want to do this exact same thing all over again on black watercolor paper. Remind me that would make for a really good stream. Okay, so in the future we'll do this, but we can talk about it because I'm watching paint dry again anyway. This sort of Aurora Borealis effect would look so good with like metallic watercolor, right? That would look really good. Problem is you're gonna have trouble painting on top of it, which is why I'm saying we're gonna revisit this on black watercolor paper, because that is actually an easier way to do this. My husband is a genius. Um, ba -bum -bum. Iridescent watercolors would look really good like this, especially like if you're working on white paper, you could, um, while this is still wet, you could dab them in. It's not gonna show up as nice on camera, but it would look really good in person. Uh, you can dab them in wet into wet so they kind of blend in. I wouldn't do the whole thing on white paper. I wouldn't do the whole thing with iridescent watercolors. I would just streak them in here and there as like an eye catch. Um, and then a while back, we did a stream here on the channel. Joseph will drop the link for you guys on handmade watercolors. Um, and I had a guest, Kino Kitsune slash Kabocha came in and talked about making watercolors from uh, makeup pigments, those would look really cool on this too. Yeah, a black watercolor paper galaxy, gonna do that soon, that would be really cool. I love the black watercolor paper because you can do things that are actually very simple, but they look really complicated on the black paper. They just, it just really classes everything up. I mean, earlier in October, I did just like a little pumpkin on the black paper using the metallic watercolor. And it, I think it turned out really good. I'm pretty pleased with it. So as this is drying, hopefully, I don't know if the camera is capturing it, but I will take a photo of it and hopefully that will help. Help for later. I'll post them in the Discord channel. Anyway, um, you can start to see there's some granulation with the dust colors and the way these work is you have a base color, a base pigment, and then they added PBK, is it PBK7 or PBK11? It's the pigment used for lunar black, which is a granulating black pigment. I'm not painting, don't worry. I just see, I just see like some pooled water that I can easily up. Vimus says, I bought one 100% cotton watercolor pad. Still haven't used it because I'm terrified of messing up that expensive paper. Oh man, the art hoarding. I feel ya, I feel ya. So the thing about art supplies is that if you don't use them, they can go bad. And I have, had, I have hoarded art supplies, Joseph will tell you, I have hoarded art supplies. I have kept them for a rainy day and my cat has peed on the paper. Not this paper, obviously, but I've had to throw away paper because Bowie peed on it, which I never got to use it, so that was a waste. Um, I have had paints harden into the tube to the point where I've had to cut them out because I waited too long to use them. I have had markers, alcohol markers, dry up and crystallize on the brush because I didn't use them enough. So the thing about art supplies is if you don't use it, you will lose it. And to me, that is a way bigger waste than trying something and learning something and messing up because at least with trying something and messing up, you've that's an investment right you've learned something maybe you've learned something about the paper or you've learned something about how you like the paper or don't like the paper or you've learned something about handling the paper so the thing is about the thing with expensive art supplies and the thing i don't like is that people will often say buy student grade watercolor so you can learn how to watercolor buy student grade watercolor paper so you can learn how to watercolor um Student grade watercolors do not handle like professional grade watercolors and student grade paper doesn't handle like professional paper. So the best way to get started affordably 
is not to buy student grade, in my opinion, it's to buy, um, like for example, Shizen makes, let me grab this. I'm in the middle of reviewing this. I thought about doing the Galaxy on this, but because I am in the middle of reviewing it, I didn't want to. Shizen makes really affordable cotton rag watercolor paper. This is their, let me see if there's a way I can hold this where it's not gonna get in the painting. Um, so it's cheaper than a lot of other watercolor papers. This is one of their watercolor sketchbooks, but they also sell packs of watercolor. You can buy like the pre-cut five by seven she's in cold press and hot press in like a 50 sheet pack for like $20, which is a really good deal when you consider it is 50 sheets of watercolor paper. So you're more likely to actually use it. The cold press she's in is more like I mean, I'm sorry, the hot press she's in is more like a regular cold press watercolor. The cold press she's in is more like a rough press watercolor. It just has a more pronounced texture. But um, to me, she's in is a great way to start playing around with cotton rag paper that's affordable and behaves like cotton rag paper. Shiny paint makes everything look more classy. I agree with that. It just doesn't look that good on camera is the problem. Uh, I can relate to all of this except maybe the cat pee. Oh yeah, Bowie is, Bowie used to be a terror. He's mellowed out a lot in his old age and he's been diagnosed with kitty cat anxiety. So he's on kitty cat Xanax now. But when he was young and I was in grad school and I couldn't spend eight hours a day hanging out with him, he would get into everything and I had to throw away a lot of prints that I'd done, like um, screen prints and lino prints because he'd ruined them. And I had to throw away a lot of paper for the same reason. Like they were in a room that was closed off and they were in the closet of that room and he managed to get into both and then knock them down and pee on them. And Hema says, once I open them up again, I'll see if they've gone bad by now or not. Uh, I'll cross my fingers that they've stayed okay. Mm. Praying watercolors are kind of, I mean, honest, praying are great for children's grade watercolor, but they still don't handle as nicely as professional watercolors do. Uh, it, it, so Calvin says it never truly goes bad. It may be solid in a tube, but it still is usable. That is an iffy one right there. So, um, like I have had, I have had Daniel Smith dry in the tube to the point where I couldn't even cut it out of the tube to use it. So I was like jamming a brush in trying to get as much as possible. If their Mayan blue dries in the tube, it doesn't. So once Mayan blue dries, Daniel Smith Mayan blue, it's a clay based watercolor. So once it dries, you're not going to reactivate it. It is one of the watercolors that do not reactivate if you dry it in a half pan. And I've also had watercolors go moldy. Um, I don't know if it's the humidity in Louisiana. Now, honey is not only a humectant, it is also antimicrobial. So honey will prevent molding, but honey is not the only thing that people use. Uh, gum Arabic is also a popular one. And I do believe gum Arabic can mold. Diamond says, my sister once brought home a set of watercolors from Hong Kong that hardened over time and was completely unusable. No idea what was in them. Yeah, that's another thing. So a lot of Asian watercolors don't use gum, Arabic, or honey. They actually use painting glue as the binder, which is like a gelatin or sometimes an animal hide based glue. So some, depending on the formulation, sometimes if they harden, if they dry completely, there's no, there's no resuscitating them unless you want to basically re mill them and then add in either new binder or new gum Arabic. And Hema says, yeah, I'm sure they're not the best. They did okay for me since I honestly don't have high standards. I can get that. Like, I don't, I don't want to yuck your yum. I don't want to be like, no, they're terrible. Cause they're a, they're not terrible. And, but, and B you, I, you live so far away. I would love to loan you one of like my nice sets to play with, but you live so far away. I don't want to mail them because the mail. Our tip. Okay. I have seen Arto around like on um, 
Amazon. I appreciate that rec because like I've like been like, oh, it says cotton rag, but like I've seen papers on Amazon that say they're cotton rag, <coughs> Arteza, and then they're not. Um, so having a rec is always really good. It makes me way more likely to buy something. And that's a good price. Now I want to play around with it. That's a good price. And then also another thing is if you buy larger pieces, you can cut them down into whatever size you want. Um, and that tends to, you, if you want to go that route, that can be more economical than like buying like a little four by six pad. So it really kind of just boils down to how you like to work. And here we sit still waiting for paint to dry. Good thing I started at six. Can you guys imagine if we started at eight? This would, this would take forever. So what I'm going to do, cause we've been, we've been chatting for an hour, 39 minutes is I'm going to go refresh my water. So I have clean water cause I'm going to use a similar, um, where I apply a lot of water and then let the paint blend into that technique for our last and third layer. I am also going to get some water to drink because I do not drink paint water and I don't recommend you do either. And I am going to go use the restroom. And Kelly, that's understandable. Thank you so much for hanging out this evening. I hope you have, it's Friday. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you stay safe and hopefully I'll see you on Monday afternoon. So I am going to be right back. It is break time for Bequito. Waiting for Godot, it's about the journey, not the destination. tell you guys why it is taking so long to dry now it is raining buckets tonight yay I 
am I going to do white paint sprinkly speckles on the end? You can. You totally can. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I did um, masking fluid at the beginning. You, I think you were here for that. And I'm just going to remove the masking fluid and that's going to leave the white speckles. Yeah, I'm just going to erase the masking fluid, but I don't know if you guys watch Food Wishes. This is totally your thing. Whatever you want to do, whatever you think looks good, you should totally do it. White speckles would look really nice in person. It rains water over here. <laughs> don't make me laugh while I'm eating Rolos. Y'all don't want to see that. That's gross. Had to take the joke, huh? Actually, considering it's raining out there, especially with the fan on now, the dry time's improved a lot. I should have brought my water glass in here. Oh my gosh, yeah, can you imagine it legitimately raining buckets? I know it's like rain frogs before, and I love frogs, and that is such a sad, terrifying thought, because it's like, oh no, those poor frogs. I would not want to get splatted with a frog. I probably will go get my water glass and come back. And then we can remove the salt from this layer and do our fingers crossed final layer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I love the sound of rain at night. I got a weighted blanket and rain plus weighted blanket is like safest coziest feeling ever anxiety does funny things to you yeah you can use white splatters there's no reason not to and i mean i'll be real if i don't if if these white splatters are not um impressive enough i'll probably add some white splatters all right so i'm gonna start knocking some of this salt loose work on being a less salty person so one of the things i want when we move houses and this is like totally a wish list thing it's not gonna happen but i would love to have like a sink in the room i use as a studio so i don't have to like leave the room to switch our water something i've been thinking about doing is just putting a bucket in here for street oh man that wasn't dry just that's why we're careful about it um putting a bucket in here oh those aren't dry too <laughs> and uh when i need to switch out my water just dumping it because i keep uh gallons of distilled water or even having like a water dispenser in here and then i could just refill it and that way it's not like i'll be right back do, 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 do. okay so not all of this is dry. it looked dry but not all of it is dry Hi, Ella. Good evening. <laughs> Step in poodles instead of puddles. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Ella Green, it makes me think of like you know how some YouTube channels, okay, let's use Nile Red as an example. That's a chemistry channel I really like. And for Nile Red, when he does like these other projects that are chemistry related but not his main channel, he posts them on Nile Blue. Makes me think of that. Ooh, ooh, let, let's not talk ages here. Let me just say I am an old. I'm not ashamed of my age, but not talking about ages protects everyone involved. Man, I wish, I wish I had a, a cookie and what, or I could just get a water bucket from Magello. Like, no, I'm talking like a, a, a bucket, like a, I mean, a bucket. There we go. I like how I have to like f figure out the camera. I might look that up on Amazon after anyway, though. We don't, Magello makes some really cool stuff and we don't get 
in the U.S., at least around these parts, we don't get most of the cool Magello things. Like, I used to be able to buy the Magello paints in Jerry's. Can't buy them at Jerry's anymore, and I really liked Magello paints. And I don't like ordering paints off the internet. I prefer to buy them in a store. I don't know why. I think it's my impulsive nature. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I have all this salt on here and I'm mostly just trying to gently remove the salt because sometimes the brush just doesn't do a good enough job removing the salt. And I'm being very careful about it because I, some of this is still wet, which is like, thank you, Louisiana and your rain. And uh, there's also masking fluid on here. So I don't want to disturb the masking fluid. I want to let it sleep. Go to sleep, masking fluid. So I have hardwood floors where I'm working and uh, that makes it easier to sweep. But if you were working in a room where you have carpeting, you want to be much more careful about not sweeping it onto the floor. All right. Have a good evening, Ella. That's it. That's why I like getting it in the store. And also usually stores have like physical swatch sheets that you can reference. So like someone who works there has swatched the colors out and that's so much more color accurate than hoping whoever mans the store did a good job color correcting the scan. Now the salt is totally optional. You do not have to do the salt. It did not have as much of a flower effect as uh, I wanted it to. So that's kind of a bummer, like a flower effect in the the black areas so but that is okay now drum roll please we can finally move on to the last part it only took two hours this is such a simple watercolor painting it only took two hours it is not a difficult technique. It only took forever. Now you guys know why I time lapse like every everything I do. Because of this. All right. So, finally, I am going to add a little bit of water and it does actually reactivate the cheaper paints. So the Van Gogh dust colors are kind of reactivating. So I do need to be kind of careful about that and I'm just applying the water I don't know how well you guys can see, but in kind of stripes, if that makes sense. And it is definitely trying to reactivate the dust colors. So that is something to keep in mind for my friends painting along with the dust colors. They're okay, but my recommendation was to just mix your own at home. And now I'm gonna go in with black. And that's just probably like an ivory black. It's a pretty basic black. Now we put down water because that's going to give us a more diffused blend. So a softer transition between the black and whatever color is adjacent to it. If you just put it straight down, it's gonna 
you know, be a more striking transition, not as soft a blend. If you're working with two cups of water, which I usually recommend, the only reason I'm not is just for space considerations. Not outer space considerations, but physical table space considerations. Uh, then you could also apply and then blend out, apply and then blend out, whatever you wish. I'm also dabbing in a little bit of Payne's Gray, which is like a, a purpley blue gray to give, and I'm gonna dab in some purple too, just to give my, my spacey black a bit more dimension. And you can also dab different colors into your black in different areas, just to kind of give it a little bit more color and a little bit more interest. also use clean water and this is dirt, this is not super clean water but you know and basically do lines and then the paint will flow into it no I minimized the wrong page and now you can see what a mess my desk is to say even though the rain makes watercolor harder because it takes forever to dry there's something just super peaceful about like chilling out just painting something on a rainy evening know when you're safe inside and dry And I'm probably overworking this, but I'm just kind of breaking up some of the bright colors a little bit with some stripes of either leftover uh, dust colors or, you know, black and purple. So, unfortunately, the thing about this is we need to let it dry and then we'll be able to tell whether it's the black is dark enough because there's going to be areas where I want it to be like black or super dark purple, you know, like a dark nighttime sky. And then there's going to be areas where I want it to be or I'm okay with it being a little bit lighter. The forbidden paint water. My catcher thinks paint water is the forbidden juice. The most delicious Kool-Aid. Oh, hi again, Kelly. So is this like the negative space between the streams color? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in reality, um, what is it like? Magnetic bands or magnetic interference creates the lights. So, you know, realistically, they are closer to us than like the stars in the nighttime sky. Um, and if we were doing this on black paper, then we could just do just the color. Ah, oh, I really want to do it on black paper now, but this stream has already gone. I mean, and it's cause it's raining, frankly, that this has taken longer than I kind of wanted it to. Not that I don't enjoy hanging out with y'all. But yeah, um, I'm just trying to. You could leave it as like that bright stream of color. And hi, Ella, welcome back. Oh, now I need to be patient and let this dry.
but also I can go through and using that thirsty brush that we talked about earlier just kind of try to absorb some of the excess water something else you can do although my paper towels are getting all soaked is just take the corner and just lightly touch it into the water to wick up some of the extra water Now see, when it comes to watercolor, I don't ever use a drinking cup for my watercolor water. I always use like a, this is like a, a Faber-Castell click and go cup. So I don't make the mistake of, also, also I don't um, put my drinking cups on my desk. They're always off to the side. Yeah, paint water is not good for you. <laughs> Jokes aside, please don't drink it. Paints are full of chemicals and they taste nasty anyway. I don't know, were you watching in a dark room? Sometimes when I'm watching stuff in a dark room, it affects my uh, my color judgment. things about this stream is that I actually got the idea to do this from one of the libraries I work with. So we run an art club for teens and it's via Zoom and uh, one of the ideas for next week's meeting was to do the Northern Lights and I really like that idea. Unfortunately the only way I could think to show them how to do the Northern Lights because they're about light and color was to do it with color. So either markers or watercolor. But the thing about the art club is that we try not to do any activities where they have to have specialized materials. And another concern I had was it's, if I did it in watercolor, which yeah, I, I, I could have used Crayola watercolors, but I would not have liked how that turned out. Um, the dry time. So our club meets for about an hour and oh, we've been here two hours painting tonight. So I was kind of doing this as like a test run to see how feasible it would be. And um, as much as I really like the idea and I'm enjoying how this turned out, I don't, unless we did it on black paper, which is a specialized material, I just don't know how I could show them how to do this in under an hour, especially if it's raining, which I can't control that. Everything is chemicals, but some chemicals are bad for you. And it's like people who are like, did you know oxygen is toxic? And it's like, yep. Uh, we're probably not going to be doing watercolor that day. She gave me some other ideas too. So I'm going to kind of like work through the list and um, in a way this is good too, because if anybody in the art squad wants to do this activity, We've got this recorded, although it's gonna be two hours long. Um, let's paint along, a real time paint along on a rainy night. I think the problem legit is like, maybe I'm just not creative enough. Like maybe I'm too stuck in my own ways. Like I bet, I bet we could do the Northern Lights in crayon, cause it's an opaque medium for the most part on black construction paper that would look cool because you're really just focusing mostly on the light part of it. Mm. I do think for areas where I'm going to just go in with a little more black paint. And just darken it up a little bit. But I think this is my last layer 
and then we can remove the masking fluid and then we're basically done. So the technique is simple. We started with splatters of masking fluid. You don't have to do the masking fluid. You could uh, paint white dots afterwards if you want to. You could also use like a white crayon for a wax resist or a clear crayon for a wax resist at the start. We then painted our vibrant, sometimes neon, sometimes pastel colors, working with, uh, working with a lot of water to get those wet into wet blends. We sprinkled some salt into that just to get a little bit of a salt bloom going. Then I went in with the uh, Van Gogh Dusk colors, but you don't have to use those. Let that dry. And then we painted in with purple and a little bit of Payne's Gray, which is a dark gray color and black to kind of capture the night sky. Ooh, people who paint with coffee, yep. Yeah. And tea sometimes too. I think hibiscus tea would make a really good um, tea painting. So while I wait for this to dry, because who knows how long that's going to take on a rainy night like tonight, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup and that way when the stream's over, I don't have to spend as much time cleaning up. you I think I think it might look better on camera that it looks to me right now not that it looks bad but you know what I'm a glutton for punishment so this is going to take a while to dry I'm going to just push this off to the side and I have a cabinet of goodies that you guys can't see. And inside that cabinet of goodies is some black watercolor paper. This is actually Shizen's black watercolor paper. So you can see what I mean. You get a lot when you buy Shizen watercolor paper. And I'll just use this as like an experiment, okay? So we have a smaller piece of black watercolor paper move this over even more. I am going to get a clean cup of water and I'm going to use, let me see, I've got so many pearlescent colors. So many pearlescent colors. Too bad you can't use a hairdryer. Well also I, there's a masking fluid on it and masking fluid and hair dryers don't mix. Plus, my hair dryer is packed away somewhere, somewhere. Anyway, this gives me a chance to kind of play around with doing the uh, Northern Lights on black watercolor paper. This one should be easier. And then if I like this, I may do a standalone stream where we just do the Northern Lights on black paper. So I'm gonna go get a clean cup of water and I'll be right back. You can use um, colored leads on black paper. So like the Uni Nanodia or like the Pilot ugh, Color Eno, sorry. 
I'm kind of proud of myself because, I, like I said, I've had a migraine all day. And the stream went a lot better than I kind of was concerned it might go. But my brain is definitely like, okay, back, wrap it up. I mean, I've done streams where I've shown you guys how I draw on black paper. And actually on that note, this, the first week of December, I have a tutorial series coming up where I show you guys how to make a custom graduation cap. Because last year I made one for my younger brother when he graduated. That was the Gundam one, so a million years ago. Um, and I used the Strathmore Black Mixed Medium Paper and Poscas, and I was able to do a graphite transfer and then go over that with like orange lead. So you definitely can draw on this paper. You just, and I think you could probably even use like chalk or um, graphite. It's just harder to see. Like it doesn't show up well on streams. Okay. So how do I want to do this? The question of the ages. All right. We've got a bottle of water. Preactivate my paints a little bit just so they're easier to use. And I will... And then, since Calvin mentioned it earlier on, let's get us some white. Starry skies on black paper is so easy. So easy. tutorial that'll show you how to do it um, and you don't have to use the fine tech uh, pearlescence for this you can use any metallic watercolors you have and like these are what I have so these are what I'm using I like them okay these are not the apparently these are not like the real deal fine techs these are like kind of a knockoff like another company basically sorry still the branding is what I've been told by a friend who used to work for jet pen so who even knows all right let us let us, what do I want to do? That's the problem. I've got so many beautiful colors and I'm over here like, I don't know what colors are like. Kima, my younger brother was in college for 10 years. So don't you feel bad. It just takes as long as it takes. Some people need a little bit more time. Okay, so we're going to do the same river of color working wet into wet as much as possible because I really want to do as few layers as possible on this. Activate some purple while I, ooh, that's a good purple. And while I wait on this, I'll dab in some white. Give me that purple. working too loose with this. Then grab some of this. Just doesn't look as good, y'all. Sorry. 
I would definitely have to experiment with this one a bit more, I think. Ow! One of my paint palettes fell on my foot off camera. Okay, give that a chance to dry a little bit because we're not going to, as long as it's super wet, we're not going to really be able to build up any color. It's not going to like do anything more interesting than this. It is a lot, it is basically painting with glitter. Oh, I dropped it again. What is up with my under the desk situation? So, let's see, are you dry yet? Are you dry yet? Oh, so, so close, almost. I don't know, I'm kind of liking the white paper one more. It's definitely easier right now to get that luminous look. Hmm. Why, why not, why not do something dumb? Why not, while we're waiting, why not do something impulsive? like a two for stream. Except I was thinking the second part would be a lot faster. One could do a gold galaxy just using the gold palette and that would look really pretty. I'm, st I'm still trying to do the northern lights. And that means waiting for this to dry somewhat. wait for the yo dog I heard you like painting the northern lights so much that you're painting northern lights while you paint northern lights it's not bad what I was hoping for is more pronounced color like brighter color but I also know from like painting fish and painting pumpkins that if you want this paper to give you like a real charge of color it has to be drier drier your boy, Prince Soma. I do like the granulation it's giving me though. And then I was like really sloppy up here because it started buckling. Let me attempt to fix that. Livemus says, my dad used to do a bit of picture framing on the side. He used to have these sets of metallic paints and things to cover up nail heads, cracks, etc. The palette to the right, this palette, is bringing back memories. It'll 
look bright later when it dries. Yeah, I'm hoping so, Calvin, that it'll look a little bit brighter when it dries. I have this real problem with like overworking everything. <laughs> it's always fun to take pictures in cosplay, holding the art of the character like, it me! Yeah, that's something I really like about the these sort of metallic colors is you do get a lot of color with them once they've had a chance to like absorb the water and kind of activate. dry. Leave it to me to do a wet in the wet tutorial on a night it decides to thunderstorm. I'm just making a mess at this point. It's like, what am I even doing? I don't know. I think I'm just playing now while I wait for the paint to dry. Honestly, though, I think it looks, this looks, I think you could do some really nice galaxy stuff on the black paper, but I think the other painting method works better for like northern lights. They are surprisingly difficult to paint. Why am I? Why am I doing that one? I was already working with this one. But mostly I'm just waiting for the other paint to dry. Actually, what's pretty what's pretty is the galaxies in the paint cup. All right, I'm going to set this one aside. Hopefully the other one is dry. <laughs> Hanging out with me for another two hour watercolor stream. I really kind of was hoping it'd be like a 30 minute one. You need, needs to be drier than that. Sorry about that. Still wet. Oh well. So even though some of it's still wet, I am about ready for this to be done. So I'm going to start removing the masking fluid and I'm using a masking fluid pickup for this and I'm just very lightly rubbing it on the paper. Mm, sorry. And that's how I'm getting the white stars. You could definitely do what Calvin suggested and like flick white paint onto it or silver paint would look nice too. It would be a good accent.
that's going to be like nothing in, in here because I am using a webcam for this. I'd have to make like a VTuber persona. It would just be a steaming bowl of beans on top of rice. Alright, so the plus sides about this is that it's a fairly easy one. It requires the materials, but it doesn't require a lot of mess. It doesn't require fine motor skills necessarily. I think it probably works better bigger than smaller because you have more room for uh, wet into wet techniques and more room for blends. But if you can constrain yourself, if you can stop yourself from overworking the piece unlike me, you can uh, probably work much smaller and it could maybe be useful for like ATC cards or bookmarks. Or I mean if you want to, even as a card just to send to somebody. I never think about doing- Oh, um, on this note, now that it's had a chance to dry, it is way more brilliant. It's, in my opinion, it looks a little bit better on camera than in real life, but it's still pretty pretty. Pretty 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 pretty. So I'm just going to patiently remove my masking fluid. And if you want, you could do a speckle of gold across would be really pretty. If you're into like hand lettering and brush calligraphy, something in gold would be nice or silver or white. Just anything that kind of stands out against the colors that you use for your Aurora Borealis or your Northern Lights or I know they go by different names in different countries. I'm running out of names. Oh yeah, no, he's not going to do that. That was, he wanted me to use, oh, I forget what it's called now, um, live 2D Euclid like three years ago to make a, a VTuber persona. I don't know anything about 3D modeling, like I just don't. And uh, it requires so much drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. Like if you're doing it in 2D, it requires a lot of... <laughs> assets and a lot of drawing or you can use a, like a base and, a, and modify it I guess. I just never had like the significant amount of free time where I could kind of just noodle around with it. I already have so many problems with uh, YouTube thinking my whole channel is for children and for children only. I don't know if I want to give them another reason to basically hide my videos from people. Okay, so I didn't really do any of the you know, any of the splattering in the center, so at least I don't have to worry about it there. And I keep catching bits of salt, just like in real life. Hearing all that rain definitely explains why I had a migraine earlier today. Okay, I think, I think we're done. I'm sorry my head probably got in the shot like a whole lot. So this is our white paper neon and pastel watercolors and then black watercolor. 
And then this is our black paper. Ooh, it looks so much better on camera. Our, and I like how I picked the same colors. This is our black paper with metallic watercolors on it. So that is how to paint the Northern Lights in two different watercolor styles in two different ways on two different papers. Um, it has been an, two hours and 30 minutes. I promise if you're doing this at home and it's not raining, it will not take two hours and 30 minutes. This is really not that long a thing. It's just the dry times on this one. I did tell you guys at the beginning though that the most important material you're gonna need for tonight's stream is patience. And y'all sure were patient. I sure do appreciate it. So that about wraps it up for tonight's stream. Um, depending on health, I will see you guys Monday afternoon um, to do a kit if you guys wanna hang out and do a kit. It's just meant to be kind of a low key chill kind of thing. Um, just to kind of scratch the itch for people who aren't necessarily getting as much social interaction as they'd like. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to thumbs it up. That tells YouTube you enjoy this video and they'll show it to more people. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had a lot of fun painting the Northern Lights with y'all. And now I know why I will not be showing this to the kiddos in the art squad because it just takes way too long. So have a wonderful